cool. So now we're going to actually interpret NMR spectra here. So and I'm going to give you a compound here, C3H7Cl. And I've given you both the carbon-13 NMR on the left and the proton NMR on the right. And I want you to actually determine the entire structure from it. So notice from IR, we typically just got functional groups. And from uh, mass spec, there's a lot of info there. But most commonly in, or in an undergraduate class, you're not going to get the entire structure from the mass spectrum. Uh, but in this case, from the NMRs, we can actually expect you to get the entire structure of the molecule. Now, in this case, with the NMRs, I'm cheating a little bit by giving you the molecular formula. That's helpful. And the first thing you should do if you have a molecular formula is calculate what are called the degrees of unsaturation or the hydrogen deficiency index here. And in this case, we're going to take one half of two times the number of carbon, so two times three, plus two, plus no nitrogens, and in this case, minus seven hydrogens. And then x here is halogens and minus one halogen. And we'll find out that our hydrogen deficiency index here is zero. So here we have zero degrees of unsaturation. That means no pi bonds, so no double or triple bonds, and no rings, no cycloalkanes, no benzene either implied there as well. Uh, but no pi bonds, no rings whatsoever in this compound. Uh, so big, useful piece of information as we're going through here. Uh, so carbon-13 NMR, first thing I want to know is how many signals. There's two signals. So two signals means two environments. Notice we have three carbons total, but only two signals. There's either some free rotation or symmetry going on here to reduce that number of signals uh, to only two environments. Uh, and in this case, these are both in the alkane region of the spectrum. So one's a little more de-shielded, probably closer to something electronegative, which would be the chlorine in our case, since we know the formula. Uh, but the HNMR is where we're going to find the bulk of our information. We're going to spend a little more time on that. So first thing, we'll deal with the number of signals. And again, we also see two signals here. So, and then we're going to deal with the chemical shift. And this one is straight up alkane. So, but this guy right here, notice it's still alkane. It's zero to like four and a half. But if you get past three, downfield of three, you're a hydrogen right next to a halogen or an oxygen or a nitrogen, something electronegative as the case may be. Uh, and in this case, that's got to be the chlorine in this case. Uh, so this hydrogen right here is right next to there. Now, I've made this a little easier. Instead of having to worry about the second piece of information, the integration, I've just straight up told you the ratio of hydrogens is six hydrogens to one hydrogen ratio. And as that adds up to seven here, uh, that is indeed the exact ratio. It's six to one. It's not 12 to two. It's not 18 to three. It's exactly six to one because that adds up to seven, the number of hydrogens are a molecule here. Uh, so the integration is kind of done for us here. Uh, when you're dealing with the alkane region of the spectrum, I highly recommend you start with like the end of a chain. If you were going to put together a puzzle, you might start with uh, the border of the puzzle. The border pieces are bonded to fewer other p puzzle pieces, and it's easier to kind of assemble and recognize them and stuff like that. Same thing with the alkane region of the spectrum. Oftentimes you have a long chain, you get CH2, 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 and then you end it with a CH3. Now, it doesn't have to end that way, but it's just really common. And so if you can find methyl groups, uh, that's where it's going to end, and those are only going to be bonded to one other thing with carbon only having four bonds. So I like finding methyl groups in the alkane region, and that means I'm looking typically for a multiple of three. And this 6H signal we see right here, that's a multiple of three. Uh, and in this case, the easiest way to get six equivalent hydrogens is to have two equivalent methyls. Now, technically, you could have three equivalent methylene groups, three equivalent CH2s, but that's way less common. So let's deal with two equivalent methyls. And this typically shows up in one of two ways. One, those two methyl groups are attached to the same carbon that is capable of undergoing free rotation. So that's the most common way. The second way this could work is you could have two methyl groups on opposite sides of a perfectly symmetrical molecule. So this thing's got a perfect mirror plane of symmetry or something like that, that would be possible as well. Uh, but typically, free rotation is much more common, so that's what I usually try by default first. So first thing I see is that there's six equivalent H's, so I'm going to try this lovely isopropyl group here. And then we'll take a look at the splitting. We see that it's a doublet. So in being a doublet, so we're going backwards now. So neighbors plus one would equal two peaks. So the number of neighbors would be one. So this adjacent carbon must have one hydrogen. And if I draw in a hydrogen, then I want to find a single, sig uh, single, a signal for it. That's this one hydrogen right here. So the only other signal we have, and it's for one hydrogen, so that's got to be him. No, no guesswork here. And in this case, if we count the peaks, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven peaks, which means six neighbors. And indeed, that's those six hydrogens right there. So we've already counted for all of his neighbors. Now, we also said we knew he was going to be next to the electronegative atom, in this case, the chlorine. So this carbon's also bonded to the chlorine. And chlorine 
having seven valence electrons only going to make one bond. And it turns out this structure just kind of came together. It's usually not this easy, I'll warn you. And we'll see the approach to take when it's a little more complicated. But this is the structure of our molecule here. This is 2-chloropropane.